Hello everyone, welcome to a video about a solo played by one of the greatest jazz guitar players I know, and he's also Dutch, his name is Martijn van Etersen. I already made a bunch of videos about him and I will link some in the description. And today's solo is one played on the standard Nika's Dream, which is a very well known Horace Silver composition. Let's go! If you are a regular viewer of my channel, you might have noticed that I wasn't as active the past few months as I've been in the past. Several reasons for that, but one of the reasons was that I was pretty busy right here in my YouTube studio, working with my buddy Dennis Cheng to record a bunch of well-known jazz guitar players for his site, DC Music School. Check that site out, I will put a link in the description as well. And one of the guitar players we were filming was Martijn van Etersen, and he was playing one great solo after another on many standards. And while watching that and being completely amazed, I got the idea of taking one of those solos and making that the basis of a YouTube video. Of course, I asked permission uh, from Dennis for that because it's his material, but he said, yes, of course, go right ahead. So here we are, I chose Nika's Dream and that was a hard choice because all the solos are great. Once again, go check that course out. If you're at all serious about studying jazz guitar, you need to buy that course. Link in the description. But I chose Nika's Dream for today. So let's get started with the first phrase. <laughs> So Martijn starts his solo out with some easygoing phrases. Not much to say about the first three bars, they're just the start of a solo. But now we get this. So that is part of a minor scale. Uh, in this case, it's the A flat minor melodic scale. So a minor third, which is a C flat, but a major seven, so a G. And if I played it from the low E string to the high E string, you would get this fingering in this position. Very convenient fingering, check it out. There's no second finger, only one, three, four with some slides. And Martijn plays that starting from the six. To the six. And I think the lesson here is that if you play a skill in the solo, don't play it from root to root, because that's a little bit too obvious, it doesn't sound very tasteful. Play it from notes that you wouldn't expect. So from the 6 to the 6, makes it sound way more special. That also means that if you practice scales, that you should practice it starting on different notes than the root or the 3rd or the 5th. Start practicing it starting from the 2 or the 6 or the 7. So that's what we get here. Back to B flat. And then we are at the second phrase. So 
this is kind of a weird chord progression where we have a 2-5 to G flat, but it doesn't resolve. We get another 2-5 to G flat, and then it resolves. So we get A flat minor 7, D flat 7, and again A flat minor 7, D flat 7 to G flat major 7. There are several strategies you can take. One of them would be to outline every chord or to ignore all the two chords and just play four bars of the five chords. So it would be D flat 7. Or you could play four bars of A flat minor 7 or any combination thereof. But Martijn actually chooses to play three bars of A flat minor 7 and then resolve to G flat major 7. So he's already resolving earlier than the chord in the backing. So this first line, and by the way, notice that I'm playing everything straight because the rhythm here is a, a Latin rhythm or a Mozambique rhythm, and you should play straight eighth notes on top of that. So don't swing the eighth notes. That's all A flat minor seven, but then we get this line. And it's, you could play it from D flat seven to G flat major seven, but I think this line is just a line for G flat major seven. So I think that's all G flat major seven. Very nice ending on the nine here. Uh, by the way, my fingerings are not what Martin plays because I adapted, as always, the lines to my picking style, which is gypsy jazz picking, and Martin is an economy picker. So, uh, of course, he uses different fingerings, but but mine work fine. Now there is a C7 there in the in the backing, and Martin skips it, and you can do that because the C7 is a kind of an unimportant chord. It connects the two five one to G flat major that we're just doing right here, and the two five one to B flat minor, which is coming up next. This is a great 2-5-1 lick to B flat minor. Now notice that Martijn starts the line halfway the first bar. So you get 3, 4, 1, 2. And the resolution to B flat minor is there. That's halfway the, the B flat minor. Now you could say, well, he's resolving late, which is completely the case, and he might do that on purpose. But what I really think is that this phrase originally starts before beat one. So you could get three, four, one, one, one. So the lick actually does resolve on beat one of the B flat minor. But by starting late, you get this effect of resolving late. So if you would start early, you get the effect of resolving early and all three are viable options. Starting on time, resolving on time, or resolving late, starting late, resolving late, starting early, resolving early. And I don't think it's planned, but it's something that you should practice. Always, if you practice a 2 5 one lick, uh, try it out starting two beats earlier and starting two beats later. And all options sound great. Different kind of sound, but all works great. Let's go to the next phrase. <laughs> So here we have Martin really emphasizing the major seven on the minor chord, because the chord is B flat minor six, at least in my uh, tab, but you could also play B flat minor seven. This sound to A flat minor seven. And Martin's phrase is that. So he starts with a B flat minor seven arpeggio. Now he has to switch to A flat minor. Now if I would play uh, the lick only on B flat minor major seven. I will play this. Right, but he has to end here. So that's why there is this. It's, it almost seems like it's B flat minor seven there, but that's not the case. He's just transitioning to A flat minor major seven. 
get here A flat minor major seven. It's not an A flat minor major seven arpeggio. I would say this is a maybe a B major seven sharp five, something like that. But if you play it on top of A flat minor, you get that sound A flat minor major seven. So so don't think about B augmented sharp five. Just remember this this shape for A flat minor. So he shifts that shape up to B flat minor for B flat minor major seven and back to A flat minor seven. So what you could pick up from this is if you want to play minor major seven arpeggios, you could play starting on the low string like this. And then you could hang on that higher arpeggio. So let's say we play G minor, then it would be this. Let's go to the next phrase. Here we have a couple of great licks. And the amazing thing is how Martijn weaves all of these pretty complex lines together to make it one long line. And that is something very unique to Martijn. I, I really don't know any other guitar player that is capable of doing it at this level. So we probably won't be able to string all of these phrases together if we just learn them, but we could learn them separately. So this first phrase, It's a really great 2-5-1 lick to G flat. Now it's a little bit longer than you could normally play on a 2-5-1 because the first line lasts two and a half bars. That's because in this tune, the A flat minor could be stretched, right? Because we get A flat minor, D flat seven, and then again, just like the first A. But we could start the phrase on the E flat, for instance. Like that, three, four. Now, when you practice it, I would also practice it with swing eighth notes, just because probably you're gonna play it more often in swing eighth notes. So then it would be three, four. Then we get this phrase. That is really one of the most played phrases by Martijn van Eterson on major chords. So you start on the B flat, you get the B flat minor seven arpeggio. Now you get an enclosure to the major seven two slides. And the, and the special thing is that it kind of hangs on a really outside note, right? It would be the flat nine on the major seven chord. It makes no sense, but it's part of an enclosure to the F. But F is not the most important note in this line. And that makes it sound way more special if you would uh, land on that F as, the, as a, the longest note. You would get this, which is fine, but it is not as special as now, if you want to stay on G flat, you could just end like. But as I said before, in this tune, there's the C7. Altered if you want. And uh, in the first A, Martijn was ignoring it, but here he's playing it. That's really a line for C7 altered. Now we get the 2 one to be flat minor, and we get another great 2 one dig. That is just a great line starting on the on the flat five of the the half diminished chord. So C half diminished on the D, G flat, and that's the way I see the lick also. So if I have to play a two half one to G flat minor, I see this this A minor seven flat five or half diminished, and then it's right there under my first finger that the lick starts. Now let's play that first uh, phrase to G, so G major. So we would get three, four. Really great licks. Let's go to the next phrase.
Partain starts out by just quoting the theme, so three, four, one. And now we go to a two, five, one lick to D flat. Featuring that A flat augmented sound. And some enclosures to the third of D flat. Then we get that lick again. Right, if you would say on D flat we could. Also notice it starts on this A right on top of the E flat minor. But it's the same principle as we had before. It's an enclosure to to a chord tone, but the the most important note is not the end note of the enclosure. Well, it could also be. But again, we have this really outside note on a on a beat, which is in this case the A. But it resolves very nicely. Augmented. Third. Now in the this tune we get uh, some unique progression here because we get A sus A7 or E minor for one bar just all of a sudden so the progression would be E flat minor A flat 7 D flat major 7 and then E minor 7 A7 and it's always a challenge to play something there that which flows together with what you play before and what comes after but of course Martijn does that Really a great way to just very clearly outline E minor 7 to A7. So it's not very useful to learn this as a thing for other tunes because it ne almost never happens. But for this tune, it's a great just remembering to outline those changes maybe in other tunes. A quick minor 7 to a dominant chord is, is great to, to have that under your fingers. That was it for this video. Of course, there's much more to this solo, uh, the rest of the bridge and the final A part. And as usual, I will make a separate exclusive video for uh, that part for my patrons over at patreon.com. You know, so if you check that out and you want to just download the tab that you see on screen today, you can join their 45 euro tier. But if you want to see the exclusive video, it is available for my 10 euro tier patrons. And there's even a higher tier. 28 euros where you get access to everything. And I'm talking about dozens of exclusive videos and hundreds of pages of high quality tab, just like you saw today. If you like this video, please give it a like, subscribe, hit the bell icon to keep up to date on my next videos. And hopefully I will see you over on my Patreon or right here on YouTube. Bye. <laughs>